How many people believe that this is the Word of God? How many people believe it's the truth? How many people want to know what it says about what's going on around this planet today and what God's got to say to us? Friend, I want to tell you the Word of God is amazing. You know, at times there when, when I was first saved, and uh, I really didn't know much about God at all. I just got saved out of, I wasn't uh, part of a church. I wasn't part of, uh, my family weren't part of church or anything like that. And I got born again. And uh, I had a, a given, I was given a good news for modern man. Some people told me that I shouldn't read that because it wasn't a good version of the Bible. But, but that's all I had to read and I just started to read it. And uh, it was amazing that as you read the Bible, that God speaks to you through it? Is that, is, is that too much to expect? That God starts to reveal stuff to you, starts to show you things. And, uh, you know, that's how, that, that's the only way we can advance in the kingdom. It's, it's by getting hold of the word and l allowing God to speak to us because I believe that this book is alive. It's, it's a, something that's very, very alive and very, very important for you and I to read it and, and, and understand it. And I, I remember as, a, as a, I was going to a, a, a Methodist church and I started to read in there about water baptism and uh, I couldn't get it out of my heart, you know, that as a believer I should get water baptized. And I went to my Methodist minister to ask him about being water baptized and he told me that I didn't need to because I was sprinkled as a baby. But you know, everything I read Every page seemed to talk about water baptism and because God starts to speak to us through his word and I believe that's the way God wants to, I believe, break strongholds that are over our lives. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 10, 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is not gauged by how much money you have or, or your position in society or how big your home is or whatever successful you might be on this planet. I believe faith is simply believing what God says in His Word He can do. Amen? <laughs> what God says in His Word, He will perform. What God says He will do, He will do. So Father, today in Jesus' name, we come to you and we believe, Father, for the anointing just to open the Word of God to us. Lord, we don't want fads and fables and we don't want good ideas, but we want to hear what the Spirit of God has to say to us. We want to hear what the Spirit is saying in the hour that we're living in, Where, how you want us to move and how you want us to to, to act and, and, and how we can have a revelation of what you're doing right now so we can understand and believe in Jesus' name because I believe that you are going to do great things. Faith is simply believing what God says he would do, he can and will do. Jesus said this, he said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Do you believe that? He said, this is what, the Word of God says, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. He also said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In other words, what he's saying also is whatever you tolerate in your life that the enemy is putting on you will remain in your life. But what God wants you to do is to rise up and know what the Word of God says about a circumstance and about a situation and declare what God says and destroy the works or the plan that the enemy has for your life. The Word of God also says, by my stripes you are healed. Jesus speaking to you and I. And I want to say this, I believe that there's got to come a time where we rise up and start to declare what God says about us instead of declaring what the devil has put on us and going around saying, I'm sick 
or I have this, or I am poor, or, I have, or I'm, I'm hopeless, or I can't do this thing. We've got to start understanding and saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God is going to touch the Sunshine Coast with His fire, first, He must touch you and I with His fire. If God is going to move by His Spirit, He first has to touch us by His Spirit because God is going to use His church. God's plan has always been for the church. Amen? The fire of God is a consuming fire. The fire of God has come to burn out the dross, the unbelief, the hardness of our hearts, the wrong doctrines and philosophies and traditions that have infiltrated the church. This caused us to become basically useless. God wants to raise us up to be a mighty army. So if God is going to touch the Sunshine Coast with His fire, He also has to touch us first with the fire to burn out the unbelief, the hardness of our hearts that stop us from declaring what God says is truth. We have been infiltrated by the enemy. The enemy has stolen so much out of the church. The traditions of man have come in and, and become the way that we do things. But let me say it again. If God is going to touch the Sunshine Coast with His fire, He must first put the fire of God within us. How many people want the fire of God in you? I want the fire of God. So I want to speak a bit this morning about the church, our purpose. How many people know that every one of us, there is a purpose and a plan that God has ordained for your life? You are not a blob on a log. You are not a mistake. You're not an accident looking for a place to happen. You are a child of the Most High God. You are part of His army that God is raising up in this hour. And if you're not fulfilling your part, it means that there is lack. Ooh. If we are, if I am not, if you are not, if any people today, look, friend, I am so aware of so many people that God had raised up and anointed to be mightily used in this end time revival that have been affected by slander or by hurts or by disappointments and today are somewhere far away from where God would want them to be. We're praying at our prayer meetings that God will bring the backsliders back, that God would bring the prodigals back, that God would touch those people that have been hurt and been affected and today are wandering around in, a, in, the, in the desert. We'll bring them back into the house of God, bring them back to their purpose and their plan, amen? That is my greatest dream is to see men and women fulfilling the purpose and the plan that God has for their life. God has a plan for your life. Let me say it again. If you are not doing what God has called you to do, then there is lack in the church. And I believe that God is going to change all that. Amen. Over the last few weeks, the Holy Spirit has been urging us to rise up and take our place. Arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Amen. So we've got to rise. We've got to, we just can't base ourselves in the presence of God. We can't just say, oh, that was nice. No, God is stirring us. He's urging us. There's a restoration that's going on. God is building His church. Amen. I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And friend, whether you know that or not, God, Jesus is not going around with a nail bag on building a building. He's building you and me because you and I are His church. It's not a building, amen. Today, there would be people in Papua New Guinea and, and different parts of the world having church underneath a coconut tree. That is just as much church as the high steeple, few people buildings. 
Because church is not a building, it's people. And God is interested in people. It's all about people, amen? God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Not the world as we see it as a globe, but He loved the people that inhabit the world. To rise up and take our place, to break down the hindrances that hold us down. Get rid of the weights, the, the, the wrong thinking, the wrong concepts. I am somebody. I am a child of God, amen. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I've been born again, amen. Can you rejoice with that? Have you been born again today? Can I hear an amen? amen? Can you turn to somebody and say, I've been born again. I'm a brand new person. I'm, glory to God. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm getting ready. I, I believe faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And I'm going to repeat some things that I've been saying because I believe that they need to go over. We need to regurgitate it. We need to, to get it into ourselves. It's not just a passing thing. Oh yeah, that message, but it's gone now. Because I know that sometimes that by the time we get to the car park, we've forgotten what's going on. <laughs> but faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing until it, begins, it gets inside of us. Because so many people have got such low self-esteem and, they're, and they're, they've got such a low opinion of themselves. And, and for them to rise up, it's like as if they only rise a, a couple of inches and they hit their head on that, that ceiling, that thing that says you'll never make it. We've got to get rid of that thing that says you'll never make it. Because I want to tell you the church is going to be the most powerful force on this earth. Under the headship of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Under that authority. And I want to tell you, friends, it's not going to be, look what I did. We're going to give him all the glory because we're going to know that we can do nothing of ourselves, but through our God, we shall do valiantly. Amen. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Let the weak say they are strong. Let the poor say they are rich. Hallelujah. Friend, there's a lot of where you're at today is in what you say. Your voice I heard somebody say, if you want to know what you're going to be like in five years' time, listen to what you're saying right now. If you want to know what you're going to be like later on in another year or two or three or four, whatever it might be, listen to what you're saying now. If you start to talk about your God like as if He's God and not a puppet on a string to, to just minister all our whims and our woes, but He is God. Oh, hallelujah, He is God. Almighty God, all-powerful God. Awesome God. What an amazing God we serve. And so I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. Psalm 110, verse 1. This text reveals a most amazing conversation between a father and his son. The Lord God said to my Lord Jesus, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord God said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a, foot, a footstool for your feet. God the Father is set upon making Christ's enemies a footstool for his feet. But you've got to realize in this verse that it says, come and sit with me until I make your enemies. Jesus isn't going to do it. He's sitting there. But I want to tell you, God is going to raise up his church that will declare and pull down the works of the enemy and cause every enemy to bow to the feet of Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. God the Father is set upon making Christ's enemies a footstool for His feet. He's going to use the church to bring it to pass. You better get used to it, friends. He's going to use you and me to bring it to pass. He's going to use people just like you and just like me to bring it to pass. Amen? 
You might think, well, oh, you know, Oral Roberts and all these other people. No, he's going to use ordinary people like you and like me. And he's going to build this thing that he says, the church of the living God. He's going to build a church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against. He's going to build a people of power. He's going to build a people that know him. See, the thing is, we know about God, but many times we don't know God. We know great things and we can sing songs, but friend, to know Him, <laughs> to know Him and to know His thoughts about you are good. To know that His thoughts about you are, are, are wonderful, amen. Because God thinks something very, very high about, about you. He thinks you're gonna make it. <laughs> he knows, friend, I wanna tell you, that God would never have made a promise to His Son. Son, come up here and sit with me until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. He wouldn't have said that to him if he would have been tricking him. It wasn't April Fool's Day. It was a father talking to his son and saying, son, this is what's gonna happen. Because of you, because of your suffering, because of what you're going to do, you're going to redeem mankind back to me. You're going to cause people to rise up. You're going to empower people with the mighty Holy Ghost. And I'm going to raise this people up and we're going to have a church that's victorious, ruling and reigning with us. And they're going to go out there and they're going to do battle and they're going to do war and they're going to destroy the enemy. And every enemy will be destroyed and they're going to come and they're gonna make a footstool for your feet. Yes. Friend, you have to have a confidence and an unshakable belief that what God says, He is able to do. And that what God says to His Son, He is going to do that. And friend, hell will have to freeze over before God will not present every enemy of Jesus Christ as a footstool. Amen? I don't know about you, but that makes me excited. He's going to use you and me to bring it to pass. God Himself has chosen to equip us, His church, to fulfill His promise He made to His Son. He hasn't left us down here playing with sticks, trying to fight an enemy that's got uh, atomic warheads. He has anointed us with the power and the authority, the same power that Jesus carried, the same anointing when Jesus rose from the dead in the very pit of Hades itself, in the presence of every enemy, in the presence of demonic forces, in the presence of death. God raised him up with power, with authority and he walked up to Satan and he said, give me the keys of the hell and death. And the Bible says that God triumphed over him and you and I will triumph over every work of Satan. You may have Something there that's causing you trouble. And I want to tell you, friends, if you can get rid of unbelief and believe God, that God will deliver us. Because God has made a promise. And God is not a man that He should lie. Neither the Son of Man that He should repent. Had He not said it, will He not also bring it to pass? Can I hear an amen? amen? I believe that with everything that's within me. God is doing that. God is going to equip me and you. And if I'm not doing what God has called me to do, then there is lack in the church. I want to challenge every person to rise up and be what God wants you to be. Whatever it is. Don't try to be what somebody else is. 
be what God wants you to be. Oh, but I want to be Catherine. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> She's been and gone. Amen. You be you. Somebody came up to me one day and said, Neil, I want, what, I want your anointing. I said, you are stupid. They said, why? I said, because I don't want this. I want more. <laughs> Why, why just accept what I got when I want what Jesus had? <laughs> Amen? And I know I'm not stupid. I'm, I've got enough brains to know I'm not there yet. <laughs> but we're getting there. Amen? Amen? We're on the road. I'm on the road. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a rocky old road, but it's a road. Amen? And I'm on the road. I don't care. I don't care. I want to say this. If we can catch this truth it will break down the walls that have plagued the church for years. You see, it's only the truth that will set you free. I don't want to, don't want to preach a fluffy, compromising, you'll be okay, mate. Because friend, if we just keep sitting around, we won't be all right. We'll be overrun by the devil. Because he goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if he finds you on the outskirts, you're easy picking. In the animal kingdom, they separate one from the, the herd and that one's gone. If he can separate you from the herd, <laughs> we call ourselves the herd church. <laughs> if he can separate you from the herd, he'll take you out. We need, to, we need each other, Amen. The church triumphant, the church victorious, ruling and reigning with Jesus. You going to be all right over there? All right, we're done. Good. <laughs> False humility has to go. Man. I've seen so many people there that are so full of false humility. See, whether you like it or not, God wants to use you. Whether you like it or not, God wants to use you. Can he? Will you let him? Well, shut your eyes, raise your hands. Say, here I am, Lord. <laughs> Use me. I want to be used. I want you to be part of this end time kingdom. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> the truth will make you free. Low esteem has to go. You see, there's not one of us here that haven't got a past. Anybody here got a past and you sometimes shudder with your past? Dear Jesus. <laughs> Dear me. See, you are valuable to God. To be honest with you, you are God's prized possession. More valuable than anything else, more valuable than gold, more precious than diamonds. He, 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 he died for you. He, Past failures have to go. The person that hasn't made a mistake hasn't made anything. I was a carpenter, a young apprentice carpenter. I didn't have a clue. Just went out and got a job. I knew nothing about building. My father was a pastry cook. I knew nothing about timber. I had never been on a building site before. I walked into the, work, into the workshop of this place where I got a job as an apprentice the first day and I saw this thing that was spinning around, looked like a roller to me and I almost put my hand on it only to come back a half an hour later when the thing was shut off and found out it was a buzzer. It would have taken my whole hand if I would have put my hand anywhere near it. I didn't even know what it was. The, 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 one of the carpenters said, go over and grab that plate. Now a plate is a bearer. I didn't know that at the time. The f closest thing I could say to a plate was a stump cap. So I brought him over a stump cap. <laughs> he shook his head. <laughs> I 
I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> but I now can build a house. Person that hasn't made a mistake hasn't made anything. I'm not going to allow my mistakes to stop me from going where God wants me to go. I'm not going to stop, you know, where I've been to stop me from going where God wants me to go. I'm not stopping what, you know, I'm not allowing what I've done to stop me from doing what God wants me to do. Because God is bigger. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins and all our unrighteousness. What do you think about yourself? You might say, I'm a nobody, I'll never make it. Can I say this? You are killing yourself. (laughs) I want you to, every time you say, I can't do that, I want you to hear these words. You are killing yourself. (laughs) Let Neil's voice get into your head. Every time you say that is impossible, you are killing yourself and you're killing the purpose of God in your life. The devil doesn't even have to get around much. We do it ourselves. You know why? Because we've been programmed. Programmed for failure. Because you somehow or other we think you've got to do this and you've got to do that and you've got to have all these degrees. I've seen people that have got that many degrees, they wouldn't have enough power of God to blow the fuzz off a peanut. Got nothing to do with degrees, amen. Got everything to do with Jesus. You're killing yourself and your purpose. Don't ring, re, don't think wrong thoughts about yourself. Think how God thinks about you. He thinks about you, do you know that? His thoughts about you, he thinks a lot about you. Talk like God talks. I, 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 I love it when I read the scriptures and I see God and reading just God, when, even in the beginning of time when God, in the middle of chaos, in the middle of, he, he just, He didn't get himself all fuzzed up or anything like that. He just said, let there be light. You gotta talk like God talks. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. You say, but no, if I, if I keep saying it, I'll get there. I want to tell you, I'd rather be saying that than saying, I can't do anything. I'm just a miserable worm. I remember when I first went to the Methodist church and they had communion. And I'm at the rail, <laughs> kneeling at the rail there, doing my thing. And the man told me to say this, I'm nothing but a miserable worm. I'm nothing but a miserable worm. I really felt good about that. (laughs) I'm just a miserable worm. Well, I want to tell you something. This worm turned into a chrysalis and came out of that thing, amen. And now I'm a butterfly, hallelujah, amen. (laughs) Don't stay a worm, glory to God. I'm nothing but a miserable worm. Gee, I thought, how uplifting. <laughs> You're killing yourself. <laughs> when God made man in Genesis 1.31, uh, he, he said it was good. As a matter of fact, he said it was very good. That's how I think about myself now. I'm very good, amen? That's what God says about me, so I'm very good. That'll do me. I don't need to know what the Greek or the Hebrew says. I just need to know what Jesus said, what God said. (laughs) God said, I'm good. That'll do me. The truth of the matter is that God wants to use you in this great battle that will bring the enemies of Jesus, our Lord, down. 
That is the truth of the matter. Circumstances, situations, different things have all affected us. We've all got caught up in this and that. We've all been affected by certain things. We've all done stupid things perhaps. But I want to tell you in the bottom line, God wants to use you in this great end time battle. How many people know that there's a war that's beginning to rage in the heavenlies? There's a war that's going on in planet Earth for men and women. There's, there's something happening. And God wants to use you in this great end time battle to overcome, to destroy the enemies of Jesus Christ and bring them down. You know, we, we, need, we need to get up in the morning and say, devil, you're coming down. No, no, what are you going to do to me today? No, you're coming down. Hallelujah. Amen. How about, how about we try that one? Yeah. You're coming down. Go on. That wouldn't convince nobody, nothing. Come on. You're coming down. <laughs> you're coming down, devil. <laughs> his days and how many people know his days are numbered? It's already been prophesied what's going to happen. He's going in the pit. He knows he's got only a few days, whatever it is, I don't know. Not long, and yeah. <laughs> it's closer. When I first got saved, they told me that Jesus was coming back in five years. I wouldn't plant a mango tree because it took nine years to get fruit. <laughs> Somebody gave me a mango tree. I said, that's no good to me. He said, why not? I said, because uh, Jesus is coming back and I won't have to... My mother-in-law, she was 70-something at the time. I thought she was old then, but now she's only a young girl. <laughs> she, she planted one. I said, this silly woman, look how old she is. She won't last another nine years. It's going to take nine years to get a mango. I said, she ate mangoes. Off of that tree, so did I. One day there was, there was a spindly little thing. Sticking up there with these Bowen special mangoes on it. She had about nine mangoes on this tree. And this is in Townsville, and there's a cyclone came. And, uh, and uh, she went out in the middle of the cyclone. These, these, these mangoes are flying around in the wind. And uh, she went out there and she grabbed that tree by the trunk. And she said, Jesus, I'm a, I'm a born again Christian. I pay my tithes and I want these lazy man these." <laughs> Lousy mangoes, I want them. <laughs> and she got them. <laughs> we ate mango chutney and mangoes. Glory to God. I still got her recipe for mango chutney. No mangoes around this year though. The truth is God wants to use you. Can you say God wants to use me? Turn to somebody and say God wants to use me. And he wants to use you. In this great end time battle that's raging and ranting. Hallelujah. Remember in John 14, 12, Jesus speaking, most assuredly I say to you, he believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because they go to the Father. God is empowering us with the mighty Holy Spirit to overcome the lies of the enemy. Amen. Holy Spirit. We, I just looked at the clock. I wish we didn't have a clock on the wall. We've got to get out of this building by 12.30. It's very important for us to have fellowship <laughs> and a cup of coffee. <laughs> There's only one honest person in the church. So I'll have to finish it next week. I'm just getting restarted. I'm only on page three. <laughs> Jesus is alive. God wants to use you and me. God wants the anointing to flow out of you and through you. God will do things. Friends, we've allowed the enemy to walk all over us. There's not one of us here that haven't got an excuse why we shouldn't quit, why we shouldn't give up. But I want to give you one good reason to, to stay on because God is going to raise you up. 
that you will become one of the people that will cause every one of Jesus' enemies to become a footstool. Amen. You will triumph over the enemy. You will overcome the enemy. God is with us. Amen. God wants to use you. God wants to use me. He will use me. He will use you. Amen. If we give Him that opportunity to do that. You know, can I say this? Give God something to work with. Give Him a bit of change the way you talk. Talk like God talks. Think like God thinks. Speak like God speaks. Don't cop the rubbish that the enemy is trying to pour out upon you. Don't allow him to triumph over you. You will triumph over the devil, amen? And we're gonna pray for this young lady. We're gonna just believe God. We've got some oil here, girl.